hi everybody. I just finished the head gasket replacement on this John Deere L120 after watching a bunch of YouTube videos. And uh, I'm gonna share with you what I learned um, through my experience. So I'm not a mechanic. Um, it's been a long time since I've ever torqued wrenches on a, on a car. Uh, but I'll tell you, this job needed to be done and uh, I decided that I would do it myself. Uh, so what I'm gonna share with you is not uh, what I did, you know what I did, but I'm gonna show you how I prepared to set myself up for success doing this job, and I'm gonna share that uh, knowledge with, with you guys. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I did after watching these YouTube videos trying to figure out what I had to do was I power washed this engine. I watched several videos and I couldn't believe how filthy, dirty, these engines were they were working on and uh, it really bothered me so first thing I did was I power washed the engine the next thing I did it's kind of a step-by-step -step chronological order is on the top valve cover is your model type uh, and code for this machine you're gonna need the model and the type because you're gonna log into the Briggs and Stratton website and put that information in, and they're gonna provide you the specs for um, how to how to replace things or what what the specs are for the most part we'll talk about that in a second and you're also going to get the parts list so in my case I ordered a part um, gasket kit off of uh, Amazon it was $18 and I was all ready to go after I received it this is the head gasket they sent me it's like a piece of paper I decided just to go ahead and buy the actual head gaskets uh, from John Deere. They're expensive. They were 100 or no, sorry, they were 40 over 40 bucks a piece But I decided this was a job that I wanted to do only every few hundred hours and This tractor already has over 500 hours on it. So there's there's no doubt it was a due. So that's the first thing you wanted to do um, You're watching this video because you're Leaking oil you're blowing smoke. It won't start when it's hot and those were all my symptoms and yeah, that's your head gasket absolutely 100% so um, This is what I ended up doing to make my life easier. I systematically took this engine apart and as I took it apart I Replaced like for instance the bolts these bolts that hold the shroud or this this cover down. I just released them took it off and then put them back in place so I didn't have to remember where they were. Same thing with this guard. Took off these eight millimeter bolts, I think they were. Took the guard off, because that's how you get the shroud off, and then just put them back in place so I knew where they were. Where they were. The bolts that had to come out, like the intake um, uh, manifold and the exhaust manifold, I used this technique with this little box. And uh, I just put holes in it and marked what they were and then kept them all in place. Some of the other parts that came off um, I either kept them in a magnetic tray, and you may see that if I upload the other video of me actually doing this job, or I just, uh, like the valve cover bolts, for instance, I just threw a earth magnet in the case, metal case with the bolts, and everything just stayed in place. I put everything in the box with the push rods, and I never lost anything. So I'm trying to show you a way that's going to save you a lot of time. So let's go through all the tools that I used and what you're going to need for this job. You will need a T40 torques you will need a 13 millimeter wrench you will need valve adjustment gauges and that is for the final stages when you put the engine back together and push the push rods on you're gonna have to do your valve adjustments I used uh, six thousandths of an inch or 006 for the uh, intake uh, zero four and a half five for the exhaust as you can see it ran great those specs might change I don't know but those are specs you're gonna need you're gonna need a torque wrench and again, you're not gonna get any information as far as what the torque settings are for that uh, those cylinder head bolts. But I can now tell you that what I used was 220 inch pounds, which worked out to just under two or 1.8 foot pounds. So you set your torque wrench, boom, away you go, torque those down and it will seat the, uh, seat the gaskets. I used uh, an air gun, okay, hooked up to my compressor to blow some of the dust and debris away. Sockets, you're gonna need a 10. You're gonna need some extensions. You will need a 10. You'll need a 3 8 also. You'll need, uh, what is that, a half inch. You need an eight millimeter. You will need a 3 8 and you will need an 11. Uh, it's a mishmash of metric and imperial. I do not understand why it is like that, but that's just the way that it works out. That's a 5 8 um, 
uh, socket for the spark plugs. If you change them like I did, there is the, uh, there they are, RC12YC uh, spark plug, and you're gonna wanna gap them with those feeler gauges. And from the specs that you looked at from uh, Briggs & Stratton, it will say 0.3, so away you go. Um, what else are you gonna need? You're gonna need a set of Allen keys. That's for the exhaust manifold. You will need a quarter inch Allen key. Uh, magnetic pickup tool came in handy. You're gonna want some needle nose pliers to take off the gas lines. Um, what I did once I took them off, this is a little kit that you can buy at Princess Auto up here in Canada. And uh, I actually capped off with a large one, capped off the carburetor, and then I stuck a small one in the other gas line so it wouldn't leak any, any gas. Um, you're gonna want some task lighting. Um, I used drills. I didn't use any impact guns at all. In fact, I kept them right up in my toolbox. I suggest you do the same. I untorqued uh, with the uh, with the wrench or the ratchet, and then I just swapped out the, the socket and just took them out, and I reversed it when I put them back in. So once you get this apart, you're gonna wanna clean it. You're gonna wanna clean that cylinder head so you're going to want to scrape off any old gaskets. You're going to want to maybe clean out the valves. I've got some uh, brush wire brush set here, both for the drill and also for uh, just hand brushes. You're going to want some solvents, some cleaning. You're going to want some gloves. I use Q-tips to get into the tight spots. Some hand cleaner, safety glasses. And you are going to go through a absolute ton of shop towels. So probably a Costco run for you right there. Uh, what else do we have on the table here? Let's see. We've got some task lighting, which is quite helpful. And uh, I don't know if we talked about the compression uh, kit, but uh, briefly I'll talk about this. I was curious actually how bad the engine was, and I wanted something to measure um, once I was finished the job. So 25 bucks on Amazon. I picked up this kit. Uh, I ran the engine, took the spark plugs out, plugged this in, ran the engine. I got, uh, I think it was 125 and 150 respectively. Briggs & Stratton does not provide any guidance for compression, what the numbers should be. They just say if you've got a differential of, uh, you know, 25%, you might have a problem. But I, like I said, I already knew I had a problem, just wasn't sure how bad it was. I am glad I bought it because I ran this this morning and I will tell you that I got 175 PSI out of both uh, cylinders and uh, like I said as you can see a thing purrs like a kitten and ran unbelievably well okay so I'm gonna pivot and I'm just gonna talk about a couple of the things that you probably won't find uh, in your YouTube videos that you're gonna watch when the, the mechanics in there working on this engine so one of the things that I did was uh, trying to make life simple was there is a bolt that's underneath here I ended up leaving it I just took out these bolts here there's one tucked in behind here and I peeled it back like a banana. I was able to leave it in place. The next thing that I was able to do, is you look under here with that exhaust. Okay, that takes the quarter inch hex nut. I saw a lot of guys struggling trying to take that off. Even worse, trying to put it back on. I decided, well, I got an idea. Uh, once again, use that eight millimeter and I took off the heat sheet or shield, I guess you would call it, or shroud. And underneath that is only three bolts that hold the actual muffler in place. So that kind of goes in and, and that's die cut. Those holes just fit the exhaust uh, pipe. So what I was able to do is drop the exhaust and then pull the head right off with the um, exhaust pipe still in place. And then I took it off on the table, cleaned it up, put on the new gaskets, put it back together when I was ready to put it in. I just slotted it in no problem. I actually. I actually reversed the process, so I, I, I put the pipe back in, but I left it just a little bit loose so I had some movement, and then I tweaked it up with the extensions with a quarter inch, uh, with a quarter inch Allen key, and I was able to come up through this, this hole here to tighten it up. So there you go. That's everything you need to be a DIY hero and uh, fix your garden tractor, because uh, all you need is a little bit of uh, ambition and motivation. and you can do this yourself. So I really hope that was helpful because like I say, everything that I use is here. There may be a couple of extra things you're gonna need, but it's not a difficult job. Give yourself time and get organized because that is 
going to save you the most time and you actually enjoy doing this job, especially when you get the results like I got. All right, so good luck with your project.